Right, let's go. Um, our belief is, but you cannot consider something like the Camborne Busway a specific travel traffic bottleneck in isolation. We have to look at congestion at the city-wide level. If we address it in isolation on its own in a piecemeal way, it will just move the problem elsewhere, the congestion will get shifted down the road. So I'm going to start with looking at some measures, some ideas that Cambridge PPF are promoting for how to address or alleviate congestion across the city as a whole. <coughs> Next one. Um, we know the problem, or one of the problems, the housing crisis, the affordability, it's driving people into living way out of Cambridge, out in Benland, Huntingdon District, East Camps and so on, having to commute in, giving rise to peak hour congestion. We believe that this congestion is the consequence of an imbalance between the demand by drivers to use their cars and the capacity of the road system to be able to accommodate that demand. The city deal up until now has focused largely upon trying to increase capacity, often through big civil engineering projects. We believe that that is not going to work on its own. There has to be an element of demand management included as well if we're going to get drivers out of their cars. Ways of reducing demand, there are passive measures which have been tried up till now. Um, things like putting in bollards, uh, removing parking spaces, um, giving bus priorities to bus lanes and so on. Things which are designed to make driving hell on earth in Cambridge and therefore to drive people out of their cars and to take alternative public transport. All it has shown is that drivers in Cambridge are extraordinarily resilient <laughs> and seem to be prepared to sit in queues forever, even on when the bus lane has got buses passing them. We believe, therefore, that we have to be much more vigorous in the demand management measures, and that basically <coughs> means some form of fiscal element attached to it, a road charge, which in fact is what the polite word is saying, something like a peak hour levy, or the dreaded terminology, a congestion charge. Now, a congestion charge, if it's to work, has to meet three fundamental criteria. It must be fair, it must be non-discriminating, particularly to people coming in from South Camps, and it must be, as far as possible, socially equitable. So what we are saying is that in order to avoid it discriminating against South Cams, everybody who wishes to drive in the city during the peak hour will pay, irrespective of whether you live in the outside in South Cams and you're coming into a village, or you start your journey within the city, driving across the city, everybody pays. That means instead of having an outer cordon, you have a network of sensors at all the main intersections which picks up anybody using their car during the peak hours. Second thing which we believe is that there is a problem of atmospheric pollution in Cambridge. So we are proposing that there is an emission charge attached to or part of the congestion charge and that will vary according to the size of the car, the size of the engine. Bigger engines, big 4 by 4s will actually have to pay more than, small, than smaller little city runabouts. And that, in effect, will, assuming there is a link between people's income and the size of the car they drive, introduces an element of, of social equity. So all the money generated through the, uh, the congestion charge has to be ring-fenced, and it is used exclusively and solely for enhancements to the public transport system. And that, those enhancements must be in place on day one when any congestion charge is introduced. We also feel that the, uh, the improvements to the public transport has to be spread across the whole region. There are lots of villages in South Cams which have appalling bus services. If we can subsidise them and we can improve the frequency and the reliability, we spread the benefit in a fair way as widely as possible. So we need to have an efficient and effective and a cheap park and ride system coming in, I'll come on to this, uh, into Cambridge with the public, uh, 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 the, the public transport alternative available from day one. 
these are some of the elements which we believe need to go into a package for uh, alleviating congestion. The congestion charge with the income ring, ring fence to improve, to subsidise public transport across the region. We are proposing an inner and an outer cordon of park and ride on all the main arterial roads, the outer ones being say five miles out, the inner one just before the congestion area. We're great fans of the all proposed orbital bus road, route, which is being discussed with the city deal at the moment. <coughs> the western side, the eastern side, which will be highly contentious. We do not want to see it driven across our commons like a Coldham and Ditton Meadows and so on, put it in a tunnel. We want to see a great improvement in the cycling network. We started with the Chisholm Trail, which we're big supporters of, but the cycling network, if it's to be attractive, has to be segregated from the vehicle. People do not want to cycle if they are inhaling exhaust fumes or going to be flattened by buses or lorries turning the corner. And we would like to see park and cycle introduced. Where are the cycling facilities at the park and ride? We don't have them at the moment. There is a huge potential in rail, which I won't go into now, particularly linking new settlements with, uh, uh, with centres of employment with the new railway station up at the Sands Park. Um, we would like to see the buses coming in, particularly from the park and ride, either electric or hybrid, what's called Euro Standard 6. And we believe that the schools, particularly the sixth form colleges and the private schools, should be encouraged to lay on buses from the park and ride so that the parents then don't pay the congestion charge but also it reduces the amount of traffic. Now all of this is summarised on the sheet which has been handed out. If you haven't got it, there are more copies by the door. Don't try and read that. Next one. <laughs> Looking at the, how we apply this to the Camborne to Cambridge busway, we would like to see a congestion charge included as part of the package. If we do that, then the emphasis upon engineering solutions with driving new bus lanes or bus routes becomes much less significant. We would like to see a redesign of the, of the Girton interchange of the traffic coming down Maddingley Rise on the A1303 can turn right onto, sorry, going up the A428 A4 can turn right onto the M11. About 20% of the traffic of peak hours coming down Maddingley Rise wants to turn right onto the M11. If they could do it off the A428, it would greatly reduce the amount of congestion on that road. <coughs> Those two measures, we believe, would resolve the problem without having to do anything else. But we're being asked to do other things, so let's have a look at the options. Of the options, we prefer the central bus lane coming in from Camborne to the Maddingley Belt roundabout. The northern one um, is, sorry, you've got them the wrong way around. Okay, we'll start this way around then. The area one, that's the, the bit from Maddingley Marsh coming into the city. Um, we prefer the option which comes in down the, with a bus lane down the edge of the existing road. That's the central single lane bus lane. But we want to see that bus lane as a tidal flow a single lane with buses coming in in the morning and going out in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Next one. On area two, that's the far end bit, the Camborne end of it, we think again the central line, which actually provides a much better service to the existing villages, including to Caldicott and to Hardwick on the way in, is much better than putting it on the existing A428 or that very expensive southern route. Yep. The park and ride, we have no fixed idea where the park and ride should go. It's, gonna, it's a very sensitive piece of landscape up there. It's at the top of the hill. So the landscape considerations, as well as accessibility of the A428, are crucial. And bear in mind, it's going to be uh, illuminated at night with nighttime lighting. So it's probably inappropriate to have it sitting next to the American Cemetery, it may indeed do better to put it further down the A428 back towards, uh, towards Camborne. Next one. <coughs> we seem to be jumping around a bit. Next one. Okay, that's a tidal flow. Let's talk about tidal. Tidal flow at the moment is excluded in the consultation. 
because it says in the notes but it would only one of the benefits of the central route would only be for incoming it wouldn't help outgoing traffic that's a load of rubbish and it's used tidal flows are used extensively all over Europe in the UK Tamar Bridge um, and they are even actually planning it is part of the consultation for a tidal flow on the A40 western approach into Oxford so if it's good enough for a consultation in Oxford, why can't it be good enough for a consultation in Haiti? <laughs> coming into the city, I'm aware of time, coming into the city, we're suggesting that the load is spread in order to avoid heavy engineering works. <laughs> there are three routes which we have been looking at. One is to go directly down Maddingley Road, round the uh, roundabout outside Westminster College and into the town Northampton Street and Morton Bridge. <coughs> Second one is you come over Junction 13, turn left, go into the Northwest Cambridge site, the big interchange hub there where you can pick up the orbital bus route and others and then exit through down uh, the Huntingdon Road and across the uh, Maudlin Bridge. And a third one coming into the West Cambridge site, turning right into the West Cambridge down the Spine Road, exiting the West Cambridge site at its southeast corner, following along for about 200 yards in the moment the track of where the coat and cycle path goes, and coming in at the corner of Adams Road and Wilberforce Road, and then down Grange Road, West Road, Silver Street Bridge. And before the, the residents of Adams Road all start leaping up and down, we're talking no more than about for each of these routes, probably three or four more buses an hour. It's not as if we're connecting up a motorway. Um, and on Adams Road at the moment, it's very congested with parking both sides, masses of cyclists, just to have parking, car parking on one side and there was room. So this is what we're suggesting. Coming in, sorry, I'm standing in front, coming in from <coughs> Camborne to a park and ride, forget this Bob blob, we've changed our mind. <laughs> Somewhere in here, but it may have to be further back on the north side because of the lighting effect. Coming in down the existing road with a bus lane, tidal flow, over Junction 13, coming down then Maddingley Road, or going up through the bus interchange of the northwest site and down Huntingdon Road, or down into West Cambridge, coming out the corner here, and down <coughs> Adams Road into Grange Road. With the cycle path coming this way, down the hill, linking up with Whitwell Way, coming through Coton and up the existing uh, Coton cycle path over the bridge. So that's what we're suggesting. I think that's probably the last. Oh, am I allowed wish lists? Okay, wish list, my personal wish list is why I'm getting off piece as far as Cambridge PBF are concerned. I don't like one of the problems in the atmosphere, the atmospheric pollution in Cambridge is because the buses sit there going grump, grump for hours, spewing out masses of, of exhaust fumes. Why can't the city pass a bylaw which says that our buses should not be allowed if they're standing stationary after, say, two minutes they must turn their engine off? Secondly, I've got three of them. Okay. Secondly, close the Drummer Street um, uh, coach station. Get all the big intercity inter and the airport coaches out, and the stations for them, the terminals for them, should be in the park and ride, either on the north side or on the edge of the M11. Mm -hmm. And thirdly, is we should have, as I mentioned, a tunnel for the orbital bus route across the east side of the city uh, in order to avoid mucking up all our precious commons and green spaces. Mm -hmm. Thank you.